So if you really want to build business credit really quickly, here are the steps you need to follow. The first thing is you need to choose a proper business structure. So son, daughter, you're probably sitting there right now. You're trying to, you're thinking about building business credit. Okay. I understand that. But what is the business structure that you have? Let's go back to the origins. Okay. Do you have a C corporation? Do you have a, an S corporation? Do you have an LLC? Do you have an LP? What kind of a structure do you have? And the whole thing is that every business structure has uh, its pros and cons. So you have to really think about, you know, uh, the kind of structure that you need in the first place. And uh, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, there are services out there that will take care of you in terms of uh, helping you choose the proper business structure for the type of business you're trying to have. And especially also depending on your geography. So where are you at right now? Are you, uh, what's your state? Texas, Illinois, California, where are you? Rhode Island, or what have you. So it's really important to be, uh, everything starts from there. See, if you're trying to build business credit real quickly, the business structure that you have will actually, uh, will drive everything later on. So please be very careful. And in no case, should you have a sole proprietorship and trying to build business credit? You know, sometimes we see on the internet, people actually trying to give false advice. And, you know, let me just repeat. Don't let anybody razzle dazzle you telling you you can build business credit by remaining a sole proprietorship. It ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen. So if you're serious about so right now, if you're listening to me, you're a you're a self-employed, you're an independent contractor. You're trying to really move a, a lot. Let's say a, a level up in your business credit journey and you're trying to build business credit for real, for real. You need to organize as a business. Okay, the whole thing, the whole thing is we're talking about business credit. And if you are a, a sole proprietorship, you are not really a business. Okay, so please be a company. It doesn't matter that like if you are, let's say, uh, if you are self-employed, you are a one person, a one person business. That's fine. You can have something called a single member LLC. Okay, a single member LLC is a business, but it's, it's only you. And with that, you can actually run, you can actually uh, build business credit so really important so first thing first choose a proper business structure second thing is so after registering your business entity make sure that you get an employer identification number everything's actually uh, flows from there right EIN and it's very easy go to the IRS website it takes five ten minutes you actually uh, register your uh, you get your EIN and that's it so by choosing a proper business structure you are registering your business entity and you're getting an employer identification number that that way, you have a strong foundation for the business that will help you later on get business credit really quickly. Step number two, boss, I want you to legitimize your business. In other words, trying to really, I want you to really make your business legit. You know, a lot of folks have uh, this sort of myth about, you know, I have a business, I'm a CEO, I'm a managing partner. You know, when you go to happy hours, they're trying to brag, you know, in your face sort of flex that they, they, they actually have a business. But when you start really digging, you realize that it's all fluff. In other words, they have no, they have no business. You need to legitimize your business. Son, daughter, grandpa, grandma, uncle. And if you are listening to me right now, I don't care where you at right now. If you're listening to me, people are, and you're thinking about building business credit for real. I'm emphasizing the words for real, because we got to really, it's about time we stop playing games here. Okay. Try, you're trying to really distract the, the crowd with the, with falsehoods. If you're serious about this, you need to legitimize your business. And that means you need to open a business bank account. You need to contact a regional bank, a national bank, a local bank, doesn't really matter open a business bank account. This can be at a bank or it could be, it could also be at a credit union. It has to be a financial institution. As a matter of fact, nowadays you even have online banks. So you have blue vine, for example, which is a great, which actually offers a great uh, business uh, bank account. So you don't have to go to a branch if you don't want to. So, you, but you have to have a business bank account and the EIN that you actually uh, got from the IRS will help you open that business bank account because it's one important criterion that the bank will ask you before opening your business bank account. The next thing I want you to do in terms of uh, legitimizing your business is to basically establishing a dedicated business address and phone number. See, the whole thing is I don't care if you work from home. I don't care if you run your business from home. It's fine. If you're running your business from, from, your, base, from your basement, that's fine. But the thing is your address. 
your address has to be different. It could be the same. Don't get me wrong. It could be the same. But ideally, that's what we actually advise our clients, our business clients, our entrepreneurs whom we advise. You want to buy something called a virtual, virtual PO box or a virtual residential address. You have a lot of players in the industry right now. They actually will sell you a virtual address. It doesn't have to be a PO box. It, it can be a, a regular address. What happens here is that when banks and other uh, regulators and uh, banks regulators and other uh, stakeholders send correspondence to your address, that institution that you are paying every month ten bucks or fifteen bucks per month, they will basically actually uh, open the mail. They will scan it. And they will send it to you. That way, you are segregating your personal address from your business address, and it makes it look more professional too. As you probably understand, you know that certain zip codes are more prestigious than others. Don't ask me why, but it is what it is. So you need to get a dedicated business address and phone number. Very important. Step number three, you want to register with the three major business credit bureaus. By the way, welcome back to the show. It's really a pleasure to have you here. I'm talking to I'm talking to you into this conversation about how to build business credit quickly. Okay, so in terms of registering with the three major business credit bureaus, just gonna quickly remind you: we have Don and Bradstreet, we have uh, Experian Business, and we have Equifax Business. There are other uh, sort of credit bureaus out there. You have SBFE, you have uh, NAMS, uh, but uh, the three the three that you want to focus on right now are. Down and Bradstreet, Equifax Business, and Experian Business, with the Down and Bradstreet being the top one. What I'm trying to say here is, if you don't, if you don't have time to actually register with Down with um, Equifax Business and Experian Business, at least try to register with Down and Bradstreet. That way, you get your Down's number because you need to have your Down's number if you're trying to have a, a business credit business credit score through uh, Down and Bradstreet. Okay, and with that, you will be able to establish your payday score. You got, you need your payday score. And payday score is basically, uh, it's kind of similar to your FACO score, only for your business. And the payday score is calculated by Dun & Bradstreet. Okay, so you can see that here we are actually following a very strict formula for success, right? You choose, you actually choose the proper business structure. You legitimize your business. And now you are registering with the three major business credit bureaus. And the cool thing is that Dun & Bradstreet is going to ask you for uh, your EIN before establishing your Don's number. And uh, so once you have that, you or you'll be able to do a lot of things. What will happen here is that Don and Bradstreet will start collecting data about you, transaction, transactional data about you, and so will be uh, Experian Business and Equifax Business. This is really important. This is this will actually uh, establish a strong foundation for your business credit. So that later on, when you go to Net Thirty Net Thirty vendors or Net Forty Five vendors or business credit card issuers or business lenders, they'll look at your uh, your business more favorably. Okay. One thing I also need to say here is that um, once you actually uh, establish your business with those three major business credit bureaus, do not wait for your uh, your uh, your vendors and your creditors to start actually uh, reporting data about you about your business to them. Be proactive. If you right now, if you if you if you are let's say if you're paying utilities or rent every month or whatever, start actually reporting the data yourself. It's called self-reporting. You got to start that, and then later on, those uh, creditors will catch up. Okay, because the whole thing is you need to establish an initial credit score, business credit score. Number four, you want to apply for and get approved for business credit. Okay, so when we talk about when we talk about applying for getting the proof of business credit, we're talking about uh, several types of business credit. Okay, so you have uh, you need to establish trade lines with your suppliers. Right now, let me ask you a question: What type of suppliers are you dealing with? Like you buy an inventory from someone, right? You buy an inventory. You buy. Uh, you probably have. Uh, you're paying rent to a business landlord. You are like you are engaged with various stakeholders, so it's really important to start actually. Like if you wanted to, uh, you need to talk to the vendors and you need to L ask them to report your transactional data, your payment data to the credit bureaus. And uh, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, we actually have a, a series of videos about Net30 vendors that are very easy to get and that report your data to uh, the uh, business credit bureaus. We have Granger, you have Uline, you have uh, you have Nav. 
you have uh, a lot of you have a coil you have a lot of players if you are interested please drop us a comment below we'll certainly get back to you as soon uh, we'll let you know exactly what kind of uh, what kind of um, net 30 vendor or net 45 vendor will be great for you also try to get a business credit card or line of credit okay and you want to start everything from the current bank where where you're currently at okay it you want to start where they already know you at it's where, where they already know you and it's really important to actually parlay the great relationship hopefully the great relationship that you have established with the credit union or the bank at the personal level you want to convert that relationship into a business capacity what i'm trying to say here is that you want to apply for a business credit card you want to apply for a business line of credit you need to apply for those okay and uh, even if see the whole thing is even if you don't need you don't need the money if you are in a very lucky position where you don't need the money apply anyway because you want to establish trade lines on your uh, on your credit file and you want to do the same thing for uh, for lenders for business lenders you want to apply for a business loan and always make sure that those lenders those net 30 uh, vendors or those business line of credit or business credit card issuers that you deal with make sure they report your transactional data to to uh, credit bureaus because not all of them do some don't you know because it's a favor really it's a favor they're doing to you so make sure that you ask them first you report if they say yes then go ahead step number five i want you to really monitor your business credit data see the whole thing is you have done a, you've done a hard work now right you've uh, actually uh, chosen a, a proper business structure you have legitimized your business you have registered with uh, the three major credit ma major business credit bureaus you have applied for and get a, and gotten approved for business credit now it's important now to go back to what we call maintenance mode right you want to monitor your business credit data you want to see exactly what's in there right you want to make sure that there's no sort of like sort of some kind of a you know some kind of a sneaky data that actually messes up your whole information your whole credit information so you want to keep business information current with the bureaus and the, see the thing is the burden on uh, the burden is on you you have to proactively contact the credit bureaus to say, listen, those data is not accurate. I, 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 you know, here is a proof, you know, because things happen. No, nobody's perfect. We're all humans. Sometimes you have, you have mistakes. You have a lot of stuff happening. So it's all about you being the cleaner, the cleaning guy, the cleaning lady, number one, to make sure that you are constantly monitoring your business credit data to make sure everything that's in there is accurate. You have to do this. Okay. I don't care about it. don't don't you start giving me excuses you know i was busy whatever i'm trying to i'm trying to i'm trying to increase sales and whatnot whatever no no, no. you have to do this and also you also need to, to borrow responsibly okay when we talk about borrowing responsibly i'm not talking about just business loan i'm speaking about business none of credit i'm speaking about business uh, credit card i'm also speaking about your net 30 account so you have to understand a net 30 account is a type of credit so basically you're borrowing why because if uh, if a supplier delivers inventory to you and agrees to be paid within 30 days or 45 days the supplier by default and by default is basically extending you a line of credit because he or she is allowing you to pay not to pay immediately but to pay within a, within a specific period of time so be very careful be very responsible here and you want to maintain a good relationship with your vendors because not only because they're going to they're going to report data to the credit bureaus because it just makes sense from a karmic perspective to actually establish great relationships with uh, stakeholders who help you become rich who help your business make more money okay makes sense <music> And let me kind of give you a, so those are the things you need to do so if you're trying to build business credit quickly choose a proper business structure legitimize your uh, your business register with the three major business credit bureaus apply for and get approved for business credit and monitor your business credit data okay so those are the five steps now let me just kind of talk a little bit about the overview here and so what is business credit for real so business credit really it's basically like you know you, you are getting a, a loan, you're getting a line of credit, you're getting a, a revolving line of credit. It's like a credit card from a credit card issue from a lender in general. And they are actually trusting you to manage the cash properly and to pay them within 30 days, 45 days, based on the conditions that you have agreed upon. Okay. And the way business credit works is kind of similar to the way personal credit works. Nothing complicated, nothing different. 
you you have borrowed you have to you have to pay back it is what it is simple as that now the whole the, the difference is the difference here is that we're talking about the amount so when we talk about personal credit you probably might unless you really you really have a sturdy financial situation you're not going to get a loan for a hundred thousand dollars but business loans for one hundred thousand dollars are not anything that is that are not that rare okay people get entrepreneurs in this country get business loans all the way to one million even ten millions dollars ten million dollars we just closed yesterday uh, a business loan for a business client and uh, it was about five to ten million dollars so the the opportunities are there obviously it uh, it doesn't happen overnight it takes a, a lot of uh, a lot of time it's the culmination of uh, weeks of negotiations with the lender of back and forth right which we're speaking about providing paperwork so for, you, you you have to constantly talk okay but it is t- totally worth it and so basically uh, when we talk about business credit business business lenders also pay attention to your credit to your demographic details to your public records about your business for credit we're speaking about length of credit history right your credit utilization your credit mix payment history balances and trains and what have you for demographic details we're talking about the business size years in business and industry risk for public records we're speaking about amounts and frequency associated with bankruptcies judgments and liens so you, here you have it if you have been listening to me so far i want to give you a bonus and uh, so why building business credit is important now you might be thinking that the answer is obvious because uh you know but it's not that obvious it's really it's deeper than that building business credit goes it, it really sort of solidifies your business because sometimes especially if you are in a, you are in an industry that is uh sort of subject to cyclicality or seasonality there will be times where you know you're making money like you have revenue going up but cash is kind of tight because customers are not paying you right away customers sometimes will pay you within 30 days 45 days 60 days the same way you're getting then 35 net 45 from vendors the same way your customers might ask you for two weeks three weeks four weeks or sometimes even three months to pay you so the, the revenue is there you're making money but you don't have cash so this is why having good a good credit profile a good business credit profile will help you out because uh, lenders will actually advance the funds to you so that you can breathe while you're getting you while you're expecting while you are waiting for the cash to come from uh, your customers okay so the thing is there are a lot of uh, a lot of uh, advantages that come with uh, building proper business credit for example you can get small business financing easily and quickly let me repeat that easily and quickly those are two things that are really important when we talk about business credit because listen if you have to go back and forth with a lender with the business lender who's not really interested in your profile anyway and in the end eventually is gonna is going to rage at your ass you don't want that right you want to have a situation where you're you're constantly engaging with the business lenders who will give you the the loan quickly and easily so getting small business financing is one benefit you are actually you can also support relationships with suppliers and vendors in other words you can you can cultivate good relationship with suppliers and vendors i mean nothing is better than paying paying those stakeholders on time if you pay them on time then you have a good relationship you can also protect your personal credit okay you can also uh, and then the thing is when we talk about business credit what's in there in the first place well you think you have a constellation of factors in your business credit file you have uh, everything from uh, things like uh, you have your your collection data and court record your payment history you also have uh, you also have uh, you, the vendors the trade line that you have you also have any any other thing like lane tax liens and what have you so it's pretty diverse okay a business credit file is sort of similar to a personal credit file before we close to this conversation let me give you a few top tips that i want you to remember and this is basically the takeaway of today's conversation see the whole thing here is that you know do not rely on your personal credit if you're trying to build business credit This is why at the beginning of this show, I said, listen, you cannot remain a sole proprietorship if you're trying to build business credit. Don't do that. This is a bad, this is the, this is the, if if, if anybody tells you, tell them that they are lying. Do not rely on your personal credit. Okay. And always pay your bills on time. Always any late payment, even by one day can damage your business credit. 
You want to set up a system to ensure that you pay your business bills on time. If possible, pay them early so that your payday score will go above 80%. 80, not 80%, 80. Because a, um, a payday score superior to 80 is even wonderful. You know, lenders love that. Vendors love that. Everybody loves that. You want to check your business credit score regularly. Regularity is important. Granularity and regularity are key. So regularity means you're checking maybe uh, once a month. Make sure that uh, you're, you're on the right path based on the goals that you have set for yourself. And granularity means, means what? You are going into details, making sure that your business credit score, your business credit file in general are accurate. You want to actually review your business credit reports for errors, both informational and financial. Those are really, really important. Informational and financial. Informational in terms of all the items that are actually keep, they're actually, uh, they're featuring, they're featured on your business credit file. But financial, you want to check the amounts to make sure that in terms of in terms of uh, numerical amounts, you 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 have uh, a clear recollection of those amounts. You know, sometimes net thirty vendors make mistakes. You know, you have a lend, business lenders make mistakes, business uh, credit card issuers make mistakes. We are all humans, but this is why you have to proactively check your business credit file to make sure everything that's in there is accurate. You know, you might be thinking, well, you know, I'm busy, I, I have no time, but listen, this is going to save you a lot of time. It's going to save you a lot of money in terms of lower APR in the long run and extended maturities when you apply for a loan or a line of credit. Very important. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. In today's conversation, I was just talking to you about how to build business credit quickly. And uh, so you have to choose a proper business structure. You have to legitimize your business. You have to register with the three major business credit bureaus. You need to apply for and get approved for business credit. And you need to monitor your business credit data. Very important. I'll speak to you another time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous.